hapon may budget cuts pa na darating. Una sa lahat, magandang hapon po sa inyo at magandang hapon sa aming dekado ng dekado ng College of Mass Communication, si Dr. Roland Tulentino. Uh, una po sa lahat, nais kong magbukay sa University of the Philippines na masasabi natin po madrona at delivery room ng maraming independent media organizations. Mula po na lahat, kung saan ang susulat ng column, si Tecano Roland, ang Center for Media Freedom and Responsibility, na kung saan nandun po si Dean Luis Chororo, bilang deputy ni Ms. Melinda, at ng Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism. Sa PCIJ po, lahat halos po kami na siyang na co-founders ay proud alumni ng UP. Ang aming pong editors at writers, Paki Librarian, maliban sa dalawa ay tupong UP. Sa UP po namin natutunan ang mga pamantayan, prinsipyo, practice at filosofiya ng aming profesyon, method of work, ethics at mga adikain bilang mamamahya. At in particular, sa College of Mass Communication. Lahat po kami, palaging may sinasabing uh, sa UP namin natutunan. Sorry, sorry o ah, yung aking... Okay. Palagi po namin may sigla at korot sa puso at isip kapag nagbabalik tanaw sa aming mga nakaraan sa UP at patuloy na pakikipag-unayan sa UP at sa College of Mascom. Ngayon po, 22 years sa PCIJ, Independent Not for Profit Media Organization at Advocate ng Freedom of Information Act. Ang aming pong sama-samang naipundar, maraming mga storya, karamihan tungkol sa korupsyon at masamang pamumuno ng ating pamahalaan. Nasama na rin po dito yung mga training program. So mga tanong ninyo, patapos ang napakadaming investigative reports sa korupsyon, eh kailangan pa ba ng Freedom of Information Act? Patalaspas po yung unang nasabi ko pero hindi para sa aming independent media orgs, para po sa UP yun. We will always be proud alumni of the University of the Philippines, what it stands for, what it aspires to achieve in the service of our people, and most of all, what it wants to do in future. At dito ko po nais idiin ang ilang mensahe mula sa presentation ni Dean Roland, ang aking proud alma mater college. Dalawang bagay sa akin po na pagsusuri ang napakahalaga. Una, ang freedom of information na essential right ng bawat tao, ibig sabihin, hindi lamang ng media, kundi lahat ng mga dekano, guro, estudyante, na academic personnel at mga taong bayan. Umuusbong at magsusulong ang iba pang karapatan mula sa freedom of information. Sabi nga, FOI is the bedrock of all rights in truth. The right to education, the right to health, the right to livelihood, the right to life and even the right to participate in decision-making and the right and demand of all citizens for transparency, accountability, and good governance. Pangalawa, nakapabahala po, sabi ni Dean Roland, na tayo ay nagiging country of stark contradictions at ang mga leader ng bayan tila yata ng bobola o nagpapalusot o nagpapapanggap tungkol sa tunay nilang saloobin at paniniwala sa mga usapin ito. Marami po sa mga leader natin ay alumni ng UP at ng ibang pamantasa. Ayon sa FOI, sabi po ng papel ni Tim Roland, parang gustong makaalagwa natin, tumaas ang rating sa mga indicators pagka yung pwede tayong magyabang tulad ng Transparency Index o Corruption Index o Press Freedom Ranking. Samantala, ang pasa sa batas ng FOI na isa sa mga dalawang public advocacy ng PCIJ at ng Center for Media Freedom and Responsibility at halos 140 na organisasyon ng iba't ibang tagayang sektor at civil society organizations na kabilang sa tinatawag na Right to Know Right Now Coalition. Dati po ay mas maliit ito na sinabi ni Tim Roland na atin o Access to Information Network. Marami po sa inyo ay kabahagi ng koalisyon kasama ang mga guro dito sa UP. At sa nakaraang nating apat na taon, sa nakaraang apat na kongreso ng Pilipinas, 11 to 15 kongres po, ay patuloy na nangangampanya tayo lahat para mas may sa batas ang FOI. Madami na po tayong nagawa kasama yung ilang taga-UP, nagsulat, nagbulyeto, nagmatcha, nakipagnegosasyon, nakidebate, komanta, nagsadula, nagmotorcade, nagsimpo, nagpresko, nagsticker campaign, nagposter contest, nagfan run, at kulang na lang tumawid sa alam alambre at kumain ng apoy. Ginawa na po nating lahat para sa FOIP. Nauwi tayong sugatan ang puso, kundi man ang katawan, humahagulkol, busit na busit, Naiinis, napagod dahil sa natribol lang ng natribol ang FOI bill sa Kongreso. 
Gayun pa man, naninipuho man tayo, hindi pa rin tayo nawawala ng loob. Bakit po kaya ang kulit ng FOI campaign, mga tanong nyo? Kasing kulit ng UP, kapag academic freedom ang pinag-uusapan. Kasi po, nasa saligang batas at sa maraming international protocols, sabi nga ni Dean Roland, ng United Nations na signatory ang Pilipinas, na ang freedom of information is a matter of right, not a request, not a favor. We all want to and must assert. Sa Pebrero a 8 po, isasaganap ang 25 ang anibersaryo ng ating pagpapatibay ng 1987 Constitution o saligang batas na naglilinaw na karapatan natin ng FOI, pati na ang full transparency sa mga usapin at gawain at desisyon ng ating gobyerno. Kasama po ng FOI ang anti-dynasty provision, provision ng saligang batas na di pa rin natutupad ng mga nangangako sa Kongreso, Ekotibo at Hulikatura. Halos lahat po ng ating mga mambabatas, Pangulo, mga hukong, lagapak sa pagtupad ng mga pangakong ito. Sa mga PCIJ reports po nabanggit din Roland na tunay na lagpak sa transparency test ang marami sa ating mga mataas na opisyal ng bayan na dapat sana ay maging ehemplo ng transparency, accountability at good governance. Sa aming pong pagsasaliksik, mas mahusay pa ang compliance ng ordinaryong civil servants ng ating gobyerno, lalo na yung mga guro at mga simpleng kawani ng gobyerno kapag sinaping disclosure ng kanilang salin o asset records nila. Kabilang po, itagtag ko lang sa mga pasaway sa pagsasapubliko ng salin ang mga taga-constitutional commissions, ang ilang miyembro ng House of Representatives, ang bagong Office of Ombudsman, ang mga general ng Armed Forces, ng Philippine National Police, maraming mayor sa Metro Manila, at lahat-lahat po, justices, judges, at personnel ng judiciary mula pa 1989. Nagtatampo po ang ilang progresibo mambabatas na galing yung ilang sa UP na bakit naman daw pag sila ay nadamay sa mga report na ito. Acting independently po, whatever political party is in power, ang sabi naman namin sa kanila na sana'y intindihin nilang tungkulin ng mga journalists na siguro ay tungkulin din ng pamantasan ng Pilipinas. Ano man po ang mangyari sa impeachment trial ni Renato Corona ngayon ng ngunang telenovela o sitcom na palabas sa TV? Ang silip po namin, isang mahalaga at tunay na bagay na importante sa public interest ay ang transparency na dapat sana lahat ay sumunod. Dito ko po hihilingin kung pwede ang UP ay tumulong. Batay po doon sana ibahagi na ni Tim Roland na sana magpusigil at mangampanya na tumulong maisabatas ang FOI. At pagkatapos, mas mahalaga po kahit man may batas na magpursigin ito'y maging buhay, makahabuluhan, at mahalagang pundasyon ng good governance. Ibig sabihin ho, kung may FOI man o wala, sana lahat tayo ay mag-practice, mag-access ng impormasyon, at ipagtibay na ang karapatan nating makakuha ng mahalagang impormasyon at dokumentos publiko. Ay karapatan natin kasi pondo natin ang ginagamit sa mga bagay nito. Ilan pong halimbawa, para lang po ma-focus, parang tagtag value doon sa suggestion ni Tim Roland. Mga practices na sana ang UP, na sadyante at mga guro, ay tumulong na hikayatin ang ating mga sambayanan. Sabay-sabay, mag-file na request ng asset records ng ating mga public officials. Lalo na po may darating na deadline sa April 30. Lalo na po may darating na eleksyon sa 2013. Dito po sana, pwede rin naman dumagdag ng konting tulong ang UP, halimbawa ay friendly reminders sa mga alumni ng UP na nasa gobyerno na sana na may sumunod at huwag nang magpalusod sa mga pamantayan ito ng batas at tulungan isa batas ang freedom of information. I sincerely believe that the brand values that UP brings to the community are apart from the excellence of its academic programs, the collective body of work of its alumni in the professions and in the public service. But the academic, academic freedom we guard so seriously, in my humble opinion, must also be consistently matched by UP's public engagement outside its campuses. UP's effort to be a cogent, sharp, and awesome presence and voice in the most important public policy debates in the nation. 
that it must be said that in the campaign to pass the FOI bill and in the campaign for good governance, the UP was just a faint, quaint voice and presence in the background. Yet even more important, rather than just speaking out, it seems fair to expect UP to lead the nation. Its competence, its awesome practice, lend it to the public debates that we now confront. Palagi po sinasabi ang mga tao sa UP ay militant. Noong unang panahon po ako nililalayan kasama si Vice President Front, Maragtas Amante, sabi namin, ay ayaw namin militant lang. Gusto namin militant and expert. Pangarap po yun. Hindi po yun. At hindi namin po alam po kami nakatupad na ng aming pangarap. But I think militant, the bedrock of activism, yes, but also I think the university that holds command, lock and key, to the franchise of being militant and expert and engaged. Yun lamang po, eh, sa tingin ko, ang tamang-tamang remembrance o testimony sa legacy ni President Salvador P. Lopez. Sa tradisyon, sa mante, sa pangako ng UP na alagaan at magpundar ng community ng scholar ng bayan. Meron na po akong isang talk na mahalaga from the speeches of President S.B. Lopez. Sabi niya, when this university was founded in 1908, it was decided that like other universities elsewhere, the University of the Philippines would dedicate itself to the pursuit of truth and the dissemination of knowledge. But the university was also given a special mandate to serve as an instrument for the definition and achievement of national goals. I think, put simply, S.P. Lopez had a vision for UP with one role, speaking truth to power. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon, and thank you very much, whoever it was that included my name in this program this afternoon. Full disclosure, I am not from UP. So, uh, although I am quite friendly to a lot of the UP colleagues that I found along in the course of my work, yung pong kakulangan ng aking presentation, wala pong kasalanan ang UP. I tend to say no to most invitations that I receive these days that is outside the framework of the programs of the Center for Media Freedom and Responsibility, or CMFR, because there is so much work dictated by these programs. The monitoring of media performance, financial regulation, tinitignan namin kung ano mga mali, kung ano magagali, which hopefully promotes standards of responsibility and ethics in the practice of a free press, as well as the protection of press freedom and the enhancement of its exercise in the Philippines, including taking the killers of journalists to court. This takes us to the rather sad and dismal aspect of our Philippine environment, and I am thankful that both Dean Tolentino and Malumangahas have been very close co-workers and partners in this project. A sentimental reason suggested that I accept this invitation, which I did right away, and I did so to do by late 2011, last year, and the date was postponed, and I hope indeed that the postponed date will still allow me to come. Salvador Lopez was already in the public eye and had moved from journalism to diplomacy when I was still in school, grade school, I think. Laura, his youngest daughter, was briefly a classmate in Merino during one of the periods in residence in Juneau. This generational gap did not prevent our being joined in our work in Veritas News Weekly an alternative publication in the 1980s where I was one of the editors. The publication, along with others like it, Mr. Liz, Malaya, to name only two, 
was already into exercising freedom of information with or without an FOI law, given even martial law and the regime, despite the dismantling of all the decree at that point, the regime that still held authorities over the conduct of the press. These papers expanded the bounds of news imposed by the Marcos regime, searching out and reporting the news that the Marcos papers then did not provide to the public. It was an activist paper in the best sense of the word, as pushing the boundaries of public awareness in a period when people had only begun to stir with the shift in the political dynamic, a shift triggered off by the assassination of Benito Aquino Jr. in 1983 and eventually leading to the fall of the long time or long standing dictatorship. I think Salvador P. Lopez must have been in retirement already at that time, but he readily accepted our invitation to write a poem for the weekly and was game enough to come and visit the office to shoot the breeze with the executive editor Felix Bautista in Veritas at that time, because among my assignments as number two to Felix was a weekly column which placed my byline along with SP's column as well as that of Father Joaquin Bernas. Needless to say, it was a most exhilarating period in Philippine journalism, and that, shared in a small way with Mr. Lopez, is the reason I am here. The other reason, of course, is that Roland Tolentino is the most original coding. And we found ways to work together, bringing together the academic community and joining them to those in practice, as well with advocate groups like CMFR, PCIJ, to join efforts to try and achieve many things we are not always successful as seen in the failure to pass the FOI legislation. Salamat din Tolentino sa paggamit mo ng wigang Pilipino sa iyong diskusyon ng FOI at sa pagbigay ng maraming salitang maaaring makatulong sa pagpapalawak at pagpapaulawak ng isang isyu na hindi popular. At mapalaki ang kaalaman ng ordinaryong tao, ng mamamayan, sa paggamit ng informasyon para sa kanilang kabutin. Also, the popular visual links suggest that there are many ways in which we can, in fact, enrich the public discussion of FOI. This paper links us to the ways of popularizing the struggle for this right. Professor Tolentino provides a broad overview of this long struggle for FOI legislation. The global survey of countries that have adopted FOI shows and makes obvious that yet this is one more area in which our democratic world has lied. As compared not to the developed democratic systems of the West, but suffering in comparison to the more recently established democracies. To name only a few, Bangladesh passed its OFI, FOI in 2008, Mongolia in 2011, and a state of Malaysia, which we do not consider as great a democracy as ours, in 2010. I will venture to speculate that the resistance to the passage of the FOI legislation is the fear of its abuse, caused mainly by the assertive and aggressive style of press report, para nakaka-intimidate lalo yung power of the press. The fears of the president in asking for more time to evaluate the perils of such access, such as the spread of hysterical panic or false alarm in terms of public health situations in times of epidemic, etc. The need for executive sessions in discussions calling for confidentiality. All these can happen with or without an FOI law. And I'm saying that the passage of an FOI law might in fact help to temper the irresponsibility of press freedom practice as it happens in most democracies. 
Most of these offenses are, of course, not done by the investigative journalists who take time to review their facts and to contextualize them. But the quick haste with which articles are often written for the daily newspapers and for the blogs, which contain much information but have no context and may often be resorted to, not so much for the enhancement of public awareness, but simply to sensationalize news and perhaps to sell more of the publication and to grow a greater popular audience. The common wisdom, both on the side of the press and those in the public realm or public office who are the subject of press investigations is, for good or bad, the press in the Philippines is already able to get the information even without a law. For much of the time since the FOI bill was filed in 1990, many journalists were not interested nor involved in trying to get the law passed. Even neither were they interested in joining the discussion. For the same reason, we can get the information, says a lot of the reporters. We don't need a law, and they joke, we can always beg, steal, or borrow, or worse. Legislation that enumerates exemptions, and every version has to, has listed exemptions. There are very few in the global uh, landscape that are really liberal in, in terms of, of that law. We only make it more problematic for journalists when they go into the gray areas in releasing articles with such confidential or sensitive information, or indeed knowingly cross the line. I don't care if there's a law, I will do it anyway. And the courts, which have little training in FOI, nor lack or lack liberal orientation or lack public interest orientation, can more easily, more quickly judge and convict these journalists with the help of the law because it criminalizes the use of the exemptions. But the change is upon us and it has been dramatically so in the recent past. In the recent decade, the secrecy with which offices of the powerful have made public documents inaccessible has increased. They have improved their tactics. And it has become more and more difficult, even for the best of investigative journalists and some who have established world-class records such as the PCIJ, even public documents such as the SALM is difficult to access. Yumangas has already talked about this. The learning curve seems to have gained for those who do not believe in transparency and accountability as hallmarks of governance. The contradiction, therefore, in the government holding on or holding up against the passage of the law must be examined. In the recent decade, we've only seen the greater beneficiaries of FOI in many countries are not journalists as much as very ordinary people. Ordinary citizens who want to know more about how to protect themselves from those who violate their rights, how to check the abuse of public power, how even to gain better good service for public offices and the like. Or even like the characters in the movie described in Professor or shown by Professor Dorofino, citizens acting on behalf of those whose rights have been violated the salvage and the disappear. In Thailand, the first of the most celebrated case of the use was a mother who wanted to know the grades of the children who gained admission to a public institution. To be able to compare these to the grades of her daughter who did not get accepted. Were there other factors she wanted to know? What was it that made the difference for the cases of those who were admitted? Why not my daughter? She wanted to know, and she won the case from Thailand's Information Commission. Bringing about a bit of a change of behavior in the different schools in order to be able to justify the acceptance or their admission process. In India, the Masdur Kisan Shakti Sangatan or KNSS a grassroots people's organization involved the humble people of the villages in the campaign for access 
to official documents in order to hold elected local officials to provide an accounting for public funds that are allocated for public infrastructure and other public services, which sometimes they do not do. So MKSS went around villages holding public rallies in public squares and in open fields chanting, we don't want beer chanting in India, or whatever language it was. We don't want beer, we don't want cigarettes, we don't want clothes. I always add, we don't want sex just to wake up the audience. Or whatever other good applies, we want information. Give us information. Information that empowers them to check the mismanagement of public funds, the misuse and the abuse of the power of the tax purse. Sadly, we have missed this link to the popularization in our own campaign in the Philippines. NGOs tend to present the needs as something involving expert knowledge, confronting other experts in the policy arena, which may be the reason we have so far failed, as also the advocates in Brazil and in Mexico. I also think we need to connect the issue of information to gaps in the environment for the appreciation of information and the increasing failure of public discernment, including the media and the press, for information that is relevant and for information that matters. The academic community may need to examine their role as well. And I will follow Maduro on this path. How much appreciation do the graduates of our universities have for information and the value that can be pulled from data organization. We are indeed in an information age. We may end up lacking in understanding and awareness because we have done little to help make the connections between bodies and systems of information from one discipline to another, interrelate them, and find the policy applications that will make a difference for the people and the public out there. The question of Kishore Mabubani raised in his book, Can Asians Think, echoes a related concern that we must look into the examination of why it is we do not use the information that we have out there. How well are we preparing those who teach to think and to think on their own and confronted with information and data, some of which can be so easily manipulated to provide contradictory aspects of the truth? and everyone gets so easily misled. More than individuals thinking on their own as well, the academy needs to check on the opportunities taken or not taken to test ideas against ideas. The exercise in collective thinking, not group think, but rather to debate and to find out where indeed we can establish consensus that comes out of the practice of civic discourse. We cannot do this without having information at hand. Those of us in journalism and the media who should see our function in the continuing learning of all citizens, and we should also ask, how well do we help citizens to think on the complex issues that affect their lives, to organize data and information for them so that they can see things better with greater clarity, and that can be, so that this information can more easily demonstrate emerging crisis before it happens. If people had been watching the statistics in terms of forestation, the Sendong tragedy may have been prevented. You must ask them, can Filipinos stay? And if they can, do they? If they do, there are signs, and there are plenty of signs that they do, they cannot do so with great purpose unless they have freedom 